Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear me. My name is Jiří Olša. I work for Red Hat. This presentation is about uh, mass attachment of tracing points, uh, uh, tracing probes. Basically, it's about adding another uh, batch uh, uh, API uh, to the BPF and the batch API for uh, attaching uh, the tracing probes, uh, the trunk lines. Uh, this is actually still ongoing work. Uh, there were um, two versions of the patch set already uh, posted and uh, I'm working on another one. So there was already a uh, bit of uh, reviews. We changed the interfaces and this presentation is about to give the current status on uh, what's what's actually already been merged because there's uh, one thing that already got merged and what is the current plan for uh, for the for the next version. So actually, what is the problem uh, we are trying to solve? Uh, what's wrong? Uh, the wrong is the attachment time if you want to attach uh, multiple uh, trump lines uh, at a single time. So for example, if you run tools like BPF trace and you specify uh, KFunk, which is actually the FN3 trump line, and do the wildcard, and this wildcard actually uh, resolve in like thousands of the functions. Uh, it can take uh, really like several minutes uh, before the actual trace uh, can happen, can start because the attachment itself uh, of, the, of those trump lines takes a uh, really long time. Uh, it's actually uh, the problem of the interface. It's the problem in the uh, kernel. If you run any other tool, like Red Snoop or any other tool that wants to attach really many trump lines, you will uh, you will hit uh, hit the issue. Uh, what I'm actually talking about when I'm saying attachment uh, of the trump lines, so uh, every function that uh, you want to attach, like in this example uh, with the BPF trace, uh, each of the functions. Uh, has no operation uh, instruction at the beginning of the functions. And when you attach the trump line, you basically, uh, the kernel overrides uh, the first uh, instructions to the call to the trump line. And the trump line itself is calling uh, the BPF uh, program. So this is like the, uh, the core operation of the, uh, of the attachment. Uh, so basically, uh, writing uh, uh, in the running kernel, overwriting the uh, NOP instruction to call uh, to the uh, to the trump line. This attachment itself, this core uh, operation of uh, overwriting the NOP to the call trump trump line, is actually not done uh, by BPF subsystem. There. Uh, there is a attach layer uh, for that, and there are actually two of them. Uh, currently, BPF can use the FTRES, Direct Entries uh, API, or textbook uh, BP function. The difference is uh, if you have FTRES enabled uh, on your kernel, and the chances are that you have, FTRES is actually keeping a uh, record of every traceable function in the system. So if you want to uh, add uh, another uh, attachment like BPF uh, attachment through the F-Trace, we need to go through the F-Trace API. Uh, so that's one attach layer. If, for example, the function is not being uh, traceable by F-Trace, but it's still available, or if you don't have F-Trace enabled, uh, then we can use the uh, BPF is using the textbook uh, BP uh, function Anyway, both of them are dependent on FTRA setup, so kernel needs to be compiled with that uh, PG and MF entry uh, options to 
uh, to have this uh, no operation instructions uh, at the beginning of each functions to have this space. And also, I mean, this no operation instruction is put there uh, by the F trace on the, on the startup. So that needs to be done uh, for both of them. All related work uh, that we did is actually in accordance with the F-trace because we we want BPF and F-trace to live happily on the on the same uh, same system. So that's the that's the attached layer, uh, the F-trace direct entries uh, API that we uh, that we considering when we that we are using when we are attaching the trunk line. The current API for the attaching is uh this easy there are three functions register unregister and modify you basically get uh the function ip address and the address of the trump line on the input uh of of the function and the register will actually make that attachment happen it will it will uh make that call at the beginning of the function and uh register uh register this change in the f trace uh subsystem same for unregister and modify. You can disable the change or you can change the call uh, to, to another uh, trump line. So currently, how it looks like, uh, like what are the operations when you want to attach the trump line is that you load the program and then you call the uh, BPFC score uh, raw trace point open uh, command uh, on that program and it will do all the work it will end up with generating the trump line uh, for the function so it will have the address of the trump line and it will call the register f trace direct to actually attach the trump line uh, to the function so it will do uh, all the necessary thing in the f trace and to get it, uh, also it will run some uh, rcu sync uh, timeouts and this is basically uh, the source of the delay. If you, so currently, if you do the uh, attachment of uh, multiple uh, trump lines, you end up uh, repeating uh, these two uh, syscalls for a thousand times, two thousand times, depends how many functions you want to open. And this registration in the F trace together with this RCU sync timeouts is a source, uh, source of, the, of the delay. So after some discussion uh, with uh, Steven, uh, we also asked if, if it would be possible maybe to keep this interface and to the, uh, decrease uh, those uh, synchronization timeouts. Uh, it might be possible, but still there would be some. So uh, we decided that the uh, way is to add a uh, new batch API that would actually make the attachment for multiple functions in 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 one uh, syscall so how how does it actually look so yeah we we are adding the new batch uh, attach api uh, that can attach all functions in one call and that interface has actually bpf part and the new f trace uh, ap api part let's start with the bpf so at the moment as i said there are there two parts that already posted so uh, this is so far how the interface looks like. It's quite easy. You load the program uh, with the new flag uh, BPFF uh, multifunc, which actually informs the verifier uh, that this is program that can take uh, that can be called uh, from multiple functions. And we created the new link, new type of link uh, calling uh, called uh, tracing uh, multi. Uh, which expects uh, on the input, on the link grade structure, uh, the array of BTF IDs, and each function is represented by, uh, by BTF ID. So the user just uh, specify the array of the functions uh, that, uh, that he or she wants to uh, trace, put it to the array, the size of the array, the BTF ID count, and that's basically that's basically the full interface uh, on the BPF side. We also need to change the uh, attach uh, layer. Uh, so there's new F-Trace API. It's similar to the previous one. Of course, the only difference is that 
we actually need some way to uh, uh, to gather all the all the functions uh, that we want to change. Uh, we use the ftrace ops object, and there's already uh, and there's already function in ftrace that can uh, that can initialize the object uh, with multiple. Uh, multiple addresses uh, of the functions that you want to trace. Ftrace set filter IP is the name of the function. So basically, user calls uh, we call this function in the kernel to initialize the object with all the functions that we want to change. And then there are the three uh, new functions that are similar to previous one, just with the multi suffix. Uh, we register uh, the object uh, with the uh, with the trampoline address and Ftrace actually. Uh, um, Ftrace will make uh, the attachment to all the functions which are now aggregated in the Ftrace ob uh, object. Same for unregister, it will uh, turn all the calls uh, to the knob for all the functions, and there's also the uh, modify to change the uh, for changing the trampoline for all of the functions. So, how it all works together. So, again, you load the program uh, now with the new flag BPFF multifunc, and you create the link uh, with that program. And in that link, you specify the IP addresses of the functions uh, that you want to attach. And it does all the magic. It prepares uh, the trampoline and initializes the ftrace objects with all the uh, IP of the functions and calls uh, register ftrace direct multi. The ftrace does uh, does the job uh, of initializing, uh, I mean, of setting up uh, the ftrace uh, with all those uh, all those new uh, trampolines. And all the RCU sync timeouts are called as well, but we are in single call function, so uh, we don't uh, we don't actually care. So that's that's how the new interface uh, works. So this was actually the uh, nice and easy part of the presentation. So this is how it suppose uh, how it should work. Now I will describe uh, some of the issues that we actually had uh, along the way and uh, which will be hopefully addressed uh, in the next post. I will start uh, with the first issue we actually had uh, with the batch attachment, and that was that if you attach uh, any BPF, uh, if you attach uh, any BPF tracing function, any trampoline, uh, then the ftrace graph tracer wouldn't be able uh, to work over that function because they were just not uh, com compatible. They, they, they couldn't uh, attach uh, to the same function. And there that was actually uh, a problem uh, because now we would allow with this batch interface to attach to thousands of functions. And if any user wanted to uh, run the ftrace graph tracer at the same time, those functions would be uh, disabled. So. There was actually the solution. Steven actually got already uh, some proof of concept uh, patches uh, ready, so we just uh, rebased them on the current code, and it turned out that it's uh, working nicely. So after this fix, we could actually uh, come and starting to work properly on the uh, new batch API uh, for the for the ftrace. Another problem is uh, that till this point, every trampoline was attached to one single function. And now, if you allow uh, the trampoline be attached to multiple functions, now you have one trampoline that needs to serve all the functions that it's uh, attached to. And uh, that comes. Uh, with the price. Uh, so as I said, this slide actually shows uh, the current state. So for every attached functions, you generate uh, uh, one trampoline, which actually takes the arguments of the functions and prepares those arguments, prepares the stack for the BPF program uh, to be called. So each trampoline needs to know uh, just 
the model of the function, number of arguments and types of the functions uh, of the function that it is attached to. Uh, with this new API, you end up in this situation where you have multiple functions uh, calling a single trampoline, which needs to call uh, the BPF program and needs to prepare uh, all the arguments uh, from uh, different functions which have different number of arguments. And moreover, if you have another single trampoline attached to one of those functions, now you have function, sorry, now you have trampoline that actually uh, needs to call program which expects uh, all the uh, all the uh, all the arguments from all multiple functions and another program that expect only specific arguments uh, from uh, from that function. So basically, uh, this is uh, sort of problems that you need to take uh, into account because you have the generic trampoline for entry programs which expects only arguments uh, lined up one after each other it's it's not a problem uh, for exit uh, programs that have specific interface that have the arguments and at the end of the arguments uh, there's the return value it's a pro it's a problem because you have two programs and like in this example uh, the first one having four arguments and the return value and the other one expecting the return value where the first one has argument free so these sort of things uh, you need to deal with when you have generic trampoline this is uh, what we did in the in the first two uh, first two posts uh, but it added really a lot of complexity to generating the uh, trampoline so we decided that's not the way and alexei had actually the idea that we could uh, group together the functions with the same number of the arguments so what do you actually end up is like uh, you have the set of the functions that you want to attach and you group them by the number of arguments and for those uh, groups you create uh, separate trampolines so like in this example you end up uh, with three trampolines and really in a generic way uh, even if you have multiple thousand functions uh, you end up only with, with uh, six uh, six possible um, trampolines because uh, six is the maximum number of arguments that we support uh, at the moment. So instead of attaching one single generic trampoline, we attach uh, three of them, which is still uh, not a problem uh, with regards to attachment times. Uh, and we actually uh, save a lot of complexity while generating uh, the trampolines. Another problem, you can have, uh, as I explained, you don't have just uh, one generic trampoline, you can have uh, multiple trampolines that solve uh, the, the, the generic issues. But still, at the end, uh, there is the BPF program. And the BPF program, you have just one program, and it's called uh, from multiple functions. And it needs to know where it's being called from and what are the arguments uh, of the function. So once the program actually realized, okay, I'm being called from uh, this function, it knows which arguments to access and it has to have the way to access the, uh, the proper arguments. So this is solved uh, by adding uh, new helpers. To get the uh, IP address, uh, of the function that actually uh, called uh, the program that's being traced at the moment when the program is executed. There is a new helper, uh, BPF getFunk IP, and basically it returns the address of the function. And this is the only only part of the fact set that got already merged. Uh, nice thing is that it's not just for tracing, but also for uh, KPRO programs. And it works also for uh, standard programs, not just for uh, these new uh, multifunc uh, programs. Uh, so once you find out which function called your program, you can uh, access the arguments. And 
uh, for accessing the arguments, there will be uh, two new helpers are in plan. Uh, two new helpers it will be posted in the in the next iteration. BPF arc and BPF uh, red value. BPF arc uh, will give you the argument value, and you specify like uh, which argument uh, you want to get. And BPF red value will uh, get you the return value of the traced uh, traced function. So this way. Uh, the program will access uh, access the arguments. Last problem is something I called mixing uh, trump lines. So at the moment when a uh, trump line can be attached to only one single function, this is not a problem. There, they, there cannot be any any mixing at all. But if you have situation uh, where multiple trump lines share uh, the same functions, uh, you can end up in the situation like uh, in this, uh, like uh, I'm showing on the slide. Uh, so each rectangle is actually uh, like the set of the uh, functions that the trump line is tracing. Each trump line is uh, attaching uh, different uh, program P1 to uh, P6, and if those trump lines actually uh, didn't uh, wouldn't intersect, uh, you would have just uh, three different trump lines calling uh, the attached programs, and everything would be uh, okay. However, uh, they intersect, and we need to create new trump line for each of that intersection because. Each of the intersection needs to call uh, different uh, uh, different uh, programs. So this is actually another another complexity that hopefully will be uh, will be solved in the in the next post. The current status, as I said, there are already uh, two patch uh, two versions of the patch that uh, posted. Uh, they didn't have the complexity of mixing the trump lines. Um, they were just denying that. Uh, but it uh, basically on the review, Andrew asked Andrew asked uh, to to allow this possibility. So that will be part of the third version. Uh, the part set. Uh, contains the fix for the graph tracer. It has the, of course, all the all the needed APIs for F trace and uh, and BPF and also the self test. So hopefully, the third version will come soon. And that's all I have. If you have any questions, yeah. Does anyone have any questions for Jerry? Yeah, I have. Uh, great talk and great visualization, actually. Uh, the first question I had, like, if you can go back to the BPF link uh, API definition. How how do we distinguish between F-exit and F-entry multi-links? multi, multi links? It didn't seem... We have multi with BTF IDs and that's it. Is it like F-entry? Is it F-exit? Do we allow f what, what What were you planning? So uh, that's something you specify in the expected attach type field, right? So that's actually, uh, you say this when you load the program. Oh, I see. And then can you intermix a fan tree and the exit? Oh, wait, it's one program. Yes. Okay, so it makes sense. Yes, All it's right. another program. You load another program for exit and uh, call the link again on that program. Okay, cool. Yeah, we can probably also extend the update uh, link command to accept multiple BTF IDs and sort of like add update reset uh, operations so that you can modify this set of BTF IDs. But we can talk about that, you know, in next versions. We don't have to add it like from the very beginning. <laughs> There's already a lot of complexity. It was actually there before, I think, but I took it yeah. out because complexity was already too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, I, one, one more thing that I wanted to mention, like, uh, I don't know if you followed along, but uh, I recently added this, uh, what we call BPF cookie 
where you can uh, associate like U64 with any attachment, like with any link. Well, not any right now, it's like K-probe uh, trace points and stuff like that. Uh, I hope that we'll be able to, to do this here, but specify like separate cookie for each BTF ID. I think that should be like pretty easy to extend, but just so that you are aware. Okay, I will check on that. Because like it, you mentioned the BPF get funk IP, right? Like which is useful to know like what's being called. Uh, in practice that that like you, you need to add like extra hash map lookup and all that stuff if you need like more than just IP, right? So the cookie is the way to like, cheaply and uh, easily add like extra context for each specific attachment. So I think it will be useful in this case as well. Oh, okay. I will check on that. Yeah, cool. Thanks. Great talk. Any other questions? Uh, yes, I was wondering, um, since this is specific, um, at least seems to be specific for uh, gay friends and such, um, have you considered something similar for other program types, like for instance, tracing uh, a large amount of uh, trace points, something like that? Uh, right, not at the moment, but yeah, it could be, it should be doable. I, I hope this will be generic enough to be, to be spread over other, uh, other, other probes. So yeah, it, it might be possible if, if there's a need. So I, I'm coming from this, uh, use case, uh, where we actually, uh, need the trampolines in this, uh, BPF trace, uh, to be attached uh fastly uh so yeah that was the initial use case but i believe the, the code will be generic enough to cover also other other probes okay thank you definitely um i definitely will look forward to see this all land because that would be a use case that we're looking at so um i'll definitely have a look at that once uh the code comes through thank you great thanks Um, Masami Himamatsu, if you have, you have some comments in the, the chat, maybe you, if you'd like to bring them up directly to Jiri right now, that would be great. The chat is loading for me. I cannot see anything. Yeah. I just read it out of the little bit. I yeah. hear you. Uh, sorry, I need to uh, enable the, term, the uh, microphone. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I think there. Uh, thank you, uh, Jiri, uh, about the, the, uh, this uh, uh, the, the great uh, presentation. And uh, yeah, uh, I think this is a good uh, way to uh, to support the, the multiple uh, interface uh, event. Uh, uh, sorry, multiple um, the probes on the uh, kernel uh, entry and exit. Yeah. Um, um, I have a more question about about the, the, this uh, direct interface. So, uh, uh, can we uh, can I use that uh, this uh, direct interface? Uh, it seems that the uh, because that uh, the direct interface can uh, uh, what's the allow. Uh, us to uh, to put uh, uh, some uh, uh, pro uh, BPF probe uh, function on the uh, uh, even a uh, single uh, kernel uh, function um, and uh, it uh, the exit. So uh, I I guess I can use that uh, this uh, interface from uh, K probes uh, directory too. Uh, so the direct interface was uh, added to serve uh, the BPF, but it, it does the attachment that I said. That's the it's actually um, it's actually the work like changing the knob recall. And I'm not sure. I think the K-probe attachment works differently, right? Uh, yeah. Uh 
currently that the capable of uh, oh, sorry capable of, yeah uh, use it that the F trace um, if the uh, the probe point is uh, used by your F trace. Mm -hmm. So that's our. You are wondering uh, if you can use the this interface for K probes. Yeah, uh, especially that the K red probes. Yeah, currently, we have our a K K red probes, um, but uh, I would like to replace it with a F trace or uh, like a graph trace, because it it can uh, uh, probe uh, the uh, function exit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm not sure about the uh, red probes because um, both BPF and F-trace are doing it in a different way. Like BPF calls the main, uh, the original function by itself and then actually running the red probe. And the F-trace is hooking on the return value, or on the return address, right? So... Oh, I see. So, uh, yeah. So I'm not sure. That's... There might be problems somewhere, but... I would, I would need to double check. Okay, yeah. Okay, I will uh, check that the, the uh, implementation. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay, are there any other questions? All right, thank you, Jerry, for your presentation very much. Thank you.